Hey there, in this video I'm going to show you how to change uh, quadratic functions from standard form into vertex form using a process called completing the square. Let's start looking at that right now. Now to turn a uh, standard form equation like that into vertex form, we're going to use this process of completing the square. Now that's where we work with this, the x squared and the x term, and make that into a binomial square by making it into a perfect square trinomial along the way. All right, so we're going to just look at these two terms. I'm gonna write this three way out of the way here for now. And I'm going to even put some brackets here. And now what I need to do is think about x squared minus 10x, what this is going to mean eventually is I'll be able to turn this into x minus 5 all squared, right? Because if I multiplied out x minus 5 all squared, I'd have, I'd have x squared minus 10x, but I need a plus 25 there. So what I'm going to do up here is add a 25 to make it a perfect square uh, trinomial but then I need to balance it out by subtracting 25. The reason I need to do both of those is because I don't want to change the original uh, function, but I'm going to write it in a different form by adding those two things there. So once I've put my plus 25 minus 25, I can just group those three terms and then leave this minus 25 out that I can combine together with that, uh, with that three that's there. Now this, perfect square trinomial, I can write as this binomial square, and then my leftover values out here, I can just write, combine those together and make this minus 22, all right? So it's called completing the square because I took something that was not a complete square, that's not a perfect square trinomial, and I turned it into one by adding the appropriate number. Now remember that this is equivalent to this one that I started with. They're just written in different forms. You could, uh, you could verify, again, if you want, quick way to verify is just to pick a number and, uh, and substitute it in for uh, X and see what you get for Y. And if you get the same thing, chances are you did it the right way. So again, uh, my favorite thing to sub in is zero here because if I put zero in for this X here, it's, uh, it's quick and easy to, to work with. That is negative five squared is 25 minus 22 gives me three. If I put that same zero in here, zero squared 10 times zero, right? These two terms are both zero and I have my three, the same value there. So probably I did it right. Again, that's not a way to prove that they're equivalent, but that's a quick check to, to confirm that you probably did it right. All right, let's try one other one here. Now this one, has a leading coefficient. What we need to do with that is, it's, it's harder to complete the square if we're trying to work with that, so the best way is to factor that out first, out of these first two terms. Not out of all three of them. I'm gonna leave this number way over the side like I did before. So I'm gonna write this first of all as four, and I'm gonna factor out the four out of the first two terms. So I've got x squared, and if I factor it out of this, right, 24 divided by four, there is six. So that's gonna turn into that six. I'm gonna leave space for my numbers I need to add and subtract and then put a 16 over there, this value. Now, I, I think it's a good idea to think of the end here and what we're, gonna, what we're gonna end up with and that'll help me decide on the values that I'm gonna put in here. What I'm gonna end up with as a perfect square uh, trinomial or as a binomial square at the end is if this is x squared plus six x, this is gonna be x plus half of that number squared. And so what, I, uh, what that tells me is then, if that's gonna be x plus three all squared, I am gonna have to have a nine here and a minus nine. Again, because we wanna balance it out, we don't wanna change what we have. So along the way then, I'm gonna keep this four out in front. Uh, I'm gonna group these three terms because those are gonna be my perfect square trinomial plus nine. I'm gonna put this nine outside of the brackets. Now the thing to realize though is, now that there's a four in front, 
putting this minus nine or plus nine inside of the brackets is not the same as putting a minus nine outside of the brackets. So what I need to have outside of the brackets here is four times that minus nine or minus 36. All right, that's a key, key thing to realize there is that has to, you have to account for that number that's in front. Then I can uh, turn this into this. I can keep this four out in front. I didn't leave myself much space, but that needs to be there. And then I can group these two things together. So we've got minus 52. Again, this is equivalent to that standard form function that we started with. You could check it, uh, verify it. I'll leave you to do that yourself. We'll do this last one here. Same thing, this has a coefficient out in front to deal with that. Best thing to do is to factor it out. Now there's no uh, constant term on the end like I had in my previous two. That actually almost makes it easier because we don't have anything to combine at the end. There's my 10, I'm gonna factor it out of this. If I factor it out of plus 20, this actually needs to be a minus two here. Leave some space. My numbers that I'm gonna to need to have there, again, thinking about what perfect square binomial this could be. I like to think of the end here before I fill in my numbers there. I'll write my 10 here because that's gonna be there, but this is gonna be x minus one, half of that number, half of that number squared. If that were that value there, then the constant term I need in here is plus one, one squared. But I also need minus one to keep it balanced. So this means that I can group these three terms, x squared minus two x plus one. The minus one I'm gonna put outside, but again, remember that since there's that minus 10 in front, it needs to be a plus 10, minus 10 times that number. And then I am gonna be all done because I have that, that value there. There wasn't an extra value that I had to start with, so I'm done. That is equivalent to that. Standard form, vertex form. All right, you can verify that one as well on your own. All right, that is uh, using this process of completing the square to convert equations of quadratic functions from standard form to vertex form.